Hello everyone, this is Sir Aris. Let us continue our discussion on evaluation of definite integrals by use of the residue theorem. Um, let's talk about Cauchy principal value. It is defined as uh, the real integral of a function f x with an isolated singularity and the integration path at the point x naught as uh, the limit as r approaches zero from the right of x uh, fx integral of fx dx from some uh, lower limit to an upper limit of x not minus r plus x not plus r fx dx we indicate the cauchy uh, value by preceding the integral um, by pv okay or this is actually a typo here. Okay. This notation presumes that the location of the singularity is known. Um, for example, consider this integral cosine x over x. We know the answer is 0. But at x equals 0, um, the integrand is approximately 1 over x, which is a divergent integral. Um, oh no, this, the integral from minus infinity to infinity is zero. So the value of the integral from minus infinity to infinity is zero, even if at zero, it is divergent. So it has a singularity, but there is a non, uh, there is a finite um, integral. So it we call it the principal value. So the value zero is the principal value of this integral. Uh, consider another example. You have dx over x minus three, and the integrand becomes infinite at x equals three. Both integrals from zero to three and from three to five are divergent. But if we uh, take the integral from 0 to 5 of dx over x minus 3. That would be, say, if you want to do it piece by piece, dx over x minus 3 plus 3 to 5 dx x minus 3. This is a simple integral. It, the answer is ln of x minus 3 evaluated from 0 to 3 and here this is ln x minus 3 evaluated from three to five okay so here in this case um, we can uh, at x, so if we substitute this here directly, this simply gives us ln of 0, which we don't want. So we add here a quantity r, and here also, let's say, minus r, or actually from our definition, let's use minus r here and plus r here. Okay, yes, minus r and plus r. And I think I need to write this properly. So three plus r, okay. So that here the limits become minus r and here three plus r. When you substitute that, you have ln of three minus r minus three minus ln of negative 3 plus ln of 3 plus r minus 3 minus ln of 5 minus 3. Actually, that is um, not right. This should, it should be ln of 5 minus 3 minus ln of 3 plus r minus 3. Okay, so this is ln 3 
um, minus 3, that's ln of absolute value of r, minus ln of absolute value of negative 3, plus ln of absolute value of 2, minus ln of, again, r. But these two cancels. So you have ln of 2 over 3. Now, if you take the limit as r approaches 0, there's no r here. So this is also um, the principal value pv of this integral. So ln of 2 over 3. So the only thing you will need here is that you need to know that there is a singularity and the value of the definite integral is the principal value. Now consider another example. This would be a different topic about branch. Let's evaluate r to the power of p minus 1 over 1 plus r for p less between 0 and 1. We consider the integral first, uh, this integral, z is an, a complex number around c, where c is the contour. So our contour, the contour that we will use, uh, or the path would be, we'll start here. Okay, and then it goes around counterclockwise, and then goes back and then runs around this origin okay that would be our contour okay for z to the power of p minus one to be single value we restrict theta to the values of zero to two pi the reason is because if we go from zero to two pi this uh this complex number will have a different value for even if you go back to 2 pi, that's why uh, we need to restrict theta. Uh, so in that case, we have selected one branch of z, p minus 1. We also imagine a barrier cut or a branch cut along the positive axis. So in this case, we, will, we can cut this positive x-axis so that we, when we start from 0, so above positive axis is angle 0. When we go back, it approaches an angle 2 pi. A point which we cannot encircle without crossing a branch is called a branch point. So for example, the center is a branch point because if we have an, uh, a circle, we cannot uh, completely encircle that without going through a cut, um, a, a branch cut. So for the x-axis, positive axis, if there's a branch cut here, we want to make a circle, then we will cross the branch, or the branch cut. So in our uh, integrand, we'll, let, me, let me sketch it again. We do our integration. Our contour goes from here to here. Let's call it A. Let's call this B. This path around here, let's call that C. And then this is D. It goes to E and then turns around to A. Okay, so the integrand is an analytic function inside the closed curve C except for the pole Z. Okay, so we, we don't uh, include the origin. Um, so it is an analytic function inside the closed curve C, but Aside from that point negative one, let's say some point negative one, let's call it say this is z equals negative one, where it has a value e to the power of i pi. The residue at this point is if we set z or, or we multiply the numerator and the um, 
or this whole term by 1 plus z, and then substitute z by e to the power of i pi, we get this as our residue. From the residue theorem, the this full expression or this integral will have 2 pi i times the residue, which is this. We now integrate around the contour by section. To do this, we set z equals r e um, i theta. So we integrate when we do by section. So our contour integral z p the minus 1, 1 plus z dz. We can start from A to B, okay, from A to B along this line, okay, Z P minus 1 over 1 plus Z D Z. And then from uh, B to B, it's, it's B, C, D towards D. So this is counterclockwise. In direction, and then start from D to E, and finally a clockwise direction from E back to A. This is clockwise. Okay, for both circles. This and this, so it's D to B and E to A. We have Z equals R E I theta and D Z at constant R. You have R I E I theta D theta. Plug that in here, so e, whether we use this or this, let's say in general we can use either. So zp minus 1 over 1 plus z dz becomes integral of r e i theta to the power of p minus 1 dz is um, r i e i theta d theta divided by. 1 plus r e i theta. This e i theta minus 1 and this would cancel out. So you have integral factor out this i r p. So r p, there's an r here, it also cancels out. e i p theta divided by 1 plus r e i theta d theta. Now this approaches zero for r approaching infinity. So if r goes too high or our end for r approaching zero. So here in this case if you want to set r to infinity and zero, this to cancels. Now, if you want them to be zero, then we will set whatever r we have here and here should be at infinity. So for r, or for the path a to b with r approaching infinity, you have theta equals zero and z equals r e i theta is zero so this is times zero that is r or dz equals dr so you have from a to b of z p minus one over one plus z dz that's simply zero to infinity of r p minus one 1 plus r dr okay for the other path for d to e with r approaching infinity theta equals 2 pi now we have z equals r e i theta which is r e i 2 pi 
So DZ equals DR um, uh, DRE I two pi. Theta is constant, so this thing is constant. So you have from D to E the integral Z P minus one over one plus Z D Z is integral from infinity to zero of R E I two pi P minus one over one plus R E I two pi where e to the power of i two pi is one. Okay. And actually this one also is one. So we have from infinity to zero of r p minus one e i two pi p divided by one plus r dr or if we switch the limits it's from zero to infinity you have a negative here rp minus one ei two pi p over one plus r dr okay hence we have the total contour uh, integration of z to the p minus one 1 plus z dz equals, we take from 0 to infinity of r p minus 1 over 1 plus r dr minus equals from 0 to infinity of r p minus 1 e i 2 pi p over 1 plus r dr. Now this we know as negative 2 pi i e to the i pi p from the residue theorem okay this is so this can be factored out so you have one minus e i two pi p times integral from zero to infinity of r p minus one one plus r dr okay so we can write then zero to infinity of r p minus one one plus r dr as um, two pi i e i pi p to get rid of negative we switch this to so you have e i two pi p minus one divide by, uh, the denominator by e to the power of i pi p this becomes 2 pi i over e to the power of i pi p minus e to the minus i pi p if you do this this is cosine pi p plus i sine this would be negative cosine pi p uh, minus sine pi p so there would be i sine 2 uh, the the the, uh, the sine term would become positive because of this negative here and this negative so the, the signs would just add up cosines will cancel so you end up having pi over sine pi p and that's the value of our integral Another concept, there's an argument principle stating that n minus p uh, equals this, f prime c over fz uh, taken over all contour c times 1 over 2 pi i is equal to 1 over 2 pi theta c. Theta c is the change in the angle as we go around c. n is the number of zeros, p is the number of poles of fz inside c. The poles of order n are counted as n poles. The zeros of order n are counted as n zeros. To prove this, um, consider Fz, which has a zero 
of order n at z equals a. So it, it has a zero. It means that if you have z minus a to the power of n, um, the answer is uh, zero. So this goes to uh, zero. So, or, or when you substitute a here to, uh, to z here, you get zero. So um, in this case, g a is not zero. So we have if you take f prime z over f z, you'll simply need to get the derivative of this. So you have n z minus a to the power of n minus one times g z plus this times the derivative of this g prime z. Um, now separating these two sums uh, or, or these two terms in the sum, you get n z minus uh, a n minus one, and there's a z minus a to the n here it becomes z minus a in the denominator and here you have g prime z over g z so in this case the residue is obviously uh, n so that the counter integral is 2 pi i n now let's consider another case where f z has a pole of order p at z equals b so we write let's say h z over z minus b to the power of b we do the uh, derivative. Derivative of this is just h prime z times this minus h z. Derivative of this divided by this squared. So that if we divide that by f z, um, which is the reciprocal of this, you'll simply have h prime z over h z minus p or z minus p to the power of p. And the residue would be equal to negative p. Take the integral of this, you get 2 pi i minus p times minus p from the residue theorem. Generally, with n the number of zeros and p number of poles, you can write this as, or the integral of this as 2 pi i times n minus p. Now, so we have this term. Let's try to solve for this, but in a different way. By direct integration, this becomes ln. So if you use, for example, if fz, it, it is a complex function, so this because this can be written as r e i theta. Theta is the angle of the function. r is, could also be a function. So this gives us ln of fz at c, which is just ln of r plus i theta at c, going around a closed contour. Uh, or, or going around a closed contour, L and R is the same. Let's say if you go from one point A, you go around, going back to A, L and R is the same. But theta might be different. Let's say if you start from zero, if you go as you go back to that position, it may be equal to two pi, which is different from zero. Hence, we have we can write n minus p equals. Uh, so if you divide this by two pi i, so it becomes this on the other side, that would be just the same with this. Uh, this divided by 2 pi i would be this divided by 2 pi i, i cancels, you have 2 pi over here.